Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Restoration Shaman Guide for Mythic Plus in Season 1 of The War Within. And this guide will be covering everything you need to know in order to play the Restoration Shaman in Mythic Plus, and it might be a little bit longer than usual because we'll be covering both hero talents Farseer and Totemic, since both of them are viable in this content. So fasten your seatbelts and if you want to help and support the channel, please check the Patreon link in the description below or the YouTube memberships which are also available below the video. Thank you very much as every little bit helps and now let's get into it. At the start, let's get familiar with the spells that you're gonna be casting all the time. Keep in mind that they'll be used a little bit differently based on the build and the hero talent specs that you use but the main concept behind them remains the same. Your most important spell is called the Riptide. Instant heal that leaves a hot on your target and it synergizes quite well with the rest of your talents. For example, giving you two stacks of Tidal Waves. They empower your next two basic abilities and they also are quite relevant to your tier set that we're gonna be looking at later. So, no matter what build or hero talents you choose, you want to be casting Riptides in between your main spells all the time. If you need to do single target healing, you have two options, one of them is healing Surge, the other is healing Wave. The Surges are very quick and they get a huge crit bonus from Tidal Waves, but they also cost a lot of mana. On the other hand, the healing wave is much slower, but it's very mana efficient and you can speed it up a little bit if you cast it with Tidal Waves. You basically have to juggle between the two and they also participate in different combos that we're going to mention in a later section. But these are your abilities when you need to do single target healing and when you need to do AoE healing, you have Chain Heal. This one is quite straightforward, it jumps and heals everyone in your party once you get a talent called Ancestral Reach, but every subsequent jump heals for less and less. A lot of talent synergies with this spell as well, we're gonna be covering them in the next sections. But before that we also have to mention Healing Rain. This is going to heal everybody in the area where you cast it. And to be honest, the healing is not that significant in Mythic Plus, but it brings you some other benefits via your talents. Acid Rain makes it do damage as well as healing, and even if you don't care about damage, it's passive, so why not take it? But the bigger benefit is your Deluge talent. This one makes everyone standing inside of your healing rain take 15% additional healing from your main spells and the same stands true if they have a Riptide on them. Long story short, you want to have this down all the time. It's going to do a little bit of damage, a little bit of healing, but you're going to be healing everyone standing inside for a lot more. As I said, your builds will be different, but there are a few talents and skills that you want to be using all the time, no matter what and how you're playing. The first one is called Earth Shield. This one increases the healing that you do to the target and heals them every time they take damage. But that's not all. If you run the Earth and Harmony talent, it also gives damage reduction to the target. And when you add a talent called Elemental Orbit, that allows you to have the Earth Shield on yourself and on somebody else in your party. This is actually huge because you're always going to have the Earth Shield on yourself, getting the extra healing and the damage reduction, but you can cast another one, let's say, on your tank. And they'll be getting the benefits as well. So make sure to have this always up. The second target should be your tank most of the time, but if you know that they're not taking damage and somebody else is in danger, you can toss the second Earth Shield to them. The Elemental Orbit also allows you to have a second shield on yourself, and that would be the Water Shield. You should always have it active on yourself as it gives you extra mana regen, but the game changer here is a talent called Resurgence. This one gives you mana back every time you critically strike with one of your main spells, making the crit strike your best stats, but we're gonna talk about that in the respective section. Speaking of crit, you're gonna run Ancestral Awakening in most of your builds, and this one has a chance to do extra free healing every time you cast your Wave Surges or Riptides, and this chance is increased if you critically strike. Earth Living Weapon is a weapon imbue, which is better than the regular mana oils. And you also need that talent to access some of the nodes below it, which are mandatory. So make sure you have this always on, and I have a weak order to remind you if you don't have it. Check the description of this video for more details or just watch my video for the best Restoration Shaman recourse that you can use during Season 1. 
Let's also mention Primal Tide Core. This gives you a free Riptide every four casts of Riptide. And since you're casting that all the time, you'll be incorporating that talent in all of your builds that we'll be covering later in this video. Now let's talk about a few minor CDs and combos that you can basically use all the time. The first one starts with Flame Shock, and yes, I know, DPS skill, but bear with me there for a second. Some of the new Shaman changes include one of the skills that has a chance to make your next Lava Burst instant proc if you have a Flame Shock ticking. This is now based and every Shaman has it by default. And all you need to do is cast Flame Shock at the start of the pool, and then eventually you're gonna take advantage of some instant Lava Burst, which are going to trigger your Master of the Elements talent. This one buffs your next healing surge and it also makes it spread additional flame shocks to nearby targets. That will give you additional instant lava bursts which are going to empower more healing surges which are going to give you more flame shocks and that's a pretty damn nice whoop. All you need to do is cast flame shock at the start of the pool and start the cycle, so make sure to do that. The next thing that we're going to mention is Primordial Wave. Many shamans do not like this spell because it requires a little bit of a setup. And you don't have to play with this talent, you can actually drop it. However, with the most recent Shaman talent changes, the cooldown of Primordial Wave has been reduced to just 30 seconds. So if you learn how to play with it, you can actually get a lot of value out of this talent. The way it works is, it applies an extra Riptide to your target, and then the next healing wave that you cast cleaves and heals everyone who already has a Riptide ticking on them. And since one of your main job is spreading Riptides already, all you need to do is follow up the skill with a healing wave to benefit. Let's also mention Nature Swiftness in this section. It makes your next healing spell insta-cast and it has just a 1 minute cooldown. So you want to use it as much as possible, although it's going to have some more specific use cases once we get to the Farseer rotation. Let's also mention the new tier set bonus. The two-piece increases the healing of spells affected by your Tidal Waves by 10% and the four-piece increases the effectiveness of Tidal Waves and reduces the mana cost of the affected spells. This does not change much gameplay-wise, but it just makes it even more important for you to squeeze in Riptides in between your other casts, as this is going to make your healing spells much more effective. You should already be doing that, but try to get more into the habit of pressing Riptide in between every two casts of Healing Surge, Healing Wave or Chain Heal. And I did say every two casts, but that number is actually a little bit different for Farseer Shaman, so let's talk about Hero Talents next. Now, as I mentioned, as Restoration Shaman, you can play both Totemic and Farseer in Mythic Plus. So the question is, what's the difference and which one to pick? Keep in mind that they're both going to change your gameplay style a little bit, with Totemic Restoration Shaman definitely being the easier of the two specs to play as it has much less buttons to press and things to worry about in general, making it quite welcome for shamans that are just learning how to play or for people just looking for smooth and easy flowing gameplay in your weekly keys. Farseer on the other hand is a little bit more complicated to play, it has a lot more buttons and synergies to worry about but it gives you a lot more control of when and how to heal if you execute it correctly. And we can say that it is definitely a high skill, high reward spec, and you can definitely play it instead of Totemic, but it's probably going to shine more in some very high keys. But I don't think it's going to matter that much which one you pick in regular content. So my suggestion is, if you have the opportunity, try both of them, see which one you like better, and go with it as we will be covering the basics of both of them next. The main game changer for Totemic Restoration Shaman is called Surging Totem. It's insta-cast that replaces your healing rain, heals for more and lasts for 24 seconds. Your talents are going to reduce the cooldown that you see on the screen down to 24 seconds, which means that you can drop those totems back to back and have almost 100% uptime. The only downside here is that your healing rain is now attached to the totem for 24 seconds, so if you drop it, you cannot actually move it unless you spec into totemic projection. This allows you to move the totem and the healing rain every 10 seconds, but it comes at the price of an extra button and keybind. 
In any case, I definitely suggest you having this talent as you'll be surprised how often you actually have to move it. The good stuff doesn't end here, you get something called lively totems which makes your main totems cast chain heals once you drop them including healing stream totem and cloud burst. Even more so, your chain heals are going to jump additional times bouncing from your totems back to people. And if that's not powerful enough for you already, they're actually going to be 25% more effective based on your totemic coordination talent and you'll be getting small free shields every 30 seconds. Now this changes your gameplay style a lot because the free chain heals from the totems are fully benefiting from any synergy and buffs that you have from your other talents. That even includes things like high tide which empowers your next two chain heals once you spend a bunch of mana and it makes them heal for more and not lose healing power once they start jumping to additional people. As a result, when AoE damage happens, you will be relying on your totems dropping them to cast the chain heals for you instead of you wasting the time to cast it and the mana to do so. Of course, if you need to do so, you can hard cast the chain heals to get some extra healing out, but the whole point of the build is to learn to rely on the totems and cast the chain heals yourself as little as possible. As a result, you'll be dropping one of the talents that we run constantly last season called Tidebringer which reduces the cast times of your chain heal significantly as you will not be casting them that much to get benefit out of it. And now the big question, if we happens, which totem do you drop to cast the chain heals for you? You can pick between Healing Stream and Cloud Burst and you have a talent that buffs both of them. Reactivity makes your Cloud Burst store more healing and your Healing Stream totem to heal a second target at 50% effectiveness. Now as we speak there is a bug that has been out for a very very long time which makes it heal for not 50 but 100% effectiveness making healing stream totem extremely good as of right now and we have no idea if and when they're going to fix it as this has been reported many times before. But my recommendation is run healing stream totem with your totemic restoration built from mythic plus and the reason for that is that you're gonna be using these totems for reactive healing. You're gonna be dropping them when you need that chain heal to AoE top everyone in your party and that's further complemented by a talent that Healing Stream comes with called Living Stream that makes it heal for a lot more in the beginning and less later on. So all in all that fits pretty well with the gameplay style which is not going to be the case for Cloud Burst which you need to use proactively as you drop the totem before the damage happens which makes the chain heal kind of weird at the situation. It's not that you cannot run cloud burst but I'll have a whole separate section talking about healing stream and cloud burst later on and for regular totemic and plus keys I would definitely recommend healing stream totem. And before we end the section let's talk about the capstone talent which you haven't mentioned yet, Whirling Elements. This one gives you 3 buffs once you drop your surging totem affecting both your next single target healing and chain heal spells. Long story short you want to consume all 3 of them as they're pretty good but you're probably going to do that automatically anyway as you're most certainly going to cast either a wave or a surge after you drop your surging totem and the busted earth living that chain heal applies to every target that it hits could be consumed by one of your automatic healing stream totem casts. So you can try to track all of that if you want to min max, if not, just know that your next couple of cats are gonna be more beefy after you drop your surging totem. Now before I give you the recommended talent build, let's talk about a couple of choice nodes that you get in the hero talent tree. The first one makes you choose between extra healing from your surging totem while your ascendance is active. We're gonna talk more about Ascendance in the cooldown section but basically that means every 2 minutes. If you're pressing that button on cooldown, which probably you're not. And the alternative is to have extra 3% damage and healing while your surging totem is active which is basically all the time. Now both of them are good but for Mythic Plus I totally recommend Amplification Core. Oversurge is pretty good for the rate where you'll be pressing Ascendance pretty much on cooldown and you'll be affecting more people with your healing rain all the time which is not true in Mythic Plus. So having 3% extra healing all the time in dungeons is pretty good value not to mention that you have a damage component included as well. Next choice note is kinda similar, you can choose to increase the healing done by your surging totem alone by 25% 
which again is going to shine in red, which is basically your healing rain healing, that is not that significant in a dungeon, where you can instead pick a shield imbue which increases your overall healing down by 2% and buffs a little bit your healing stream and cloud burst totems. Now the downside, you need to have a shield in order to use that second talent. If you're using a two-hander, you're basically stuck to the first talent, which is not the end of the world as both of them contribute enough. The last choice node should default to your oversized totems, which increases the radius of your healing rain. But keep in mind that in certain dungeons, you can switch to the Swift Rico, which is going to reduce the cooldown of your poison cleansing totem on bosses and in situations where you constantly have to use it. With that being said, here is the build that I recommend for Totemic Restoration Shaman and Mythic Plus. But of course, don't take it for granted and keep in mind everything I've said so far with the talents that I've mentioned and the choice nodes that we talked about. I'm also going to be including a section later in the video talking about some of the talent choices that you see on the screen and some of the alternatives you have in order to change some of those talents, as well as explanations, for example, of why we don't have downpour in this build. But for now, feel free to copy this from the description of this video. And now to summarize everything, the totemic rotation is actually pretty simple. Drop your surging totem on cooldown and keep it up always. Then for your maintenance healing, spread the riptides, use the minor CDs and the combos that we mentioned in the earlier section. If you have to do AoE healing, rely on your healing stream totem, which is going to do free instant cast chain heals once you drop it. And one thing that I didn't mention is a talent called totemic recall, which you can use to reset the cooldown of your most recent healing stream totem and drop another one right after. Even more so, you can take additional talent called Creation Core, which makes Totemic Recall affect not one but two totems, which means potentially you can drop back to back four healing stream totems, making this a small cooldown that you can use every three minutes. And in case you don't have healing streams available, you can hard cast the chain heals, but generally you should be trying to avoid that. In single target healing, you should be mixing between healing surges and healing waves. And to figure out the correct ratio, you just need to play a little bit to figure out how not to run out of mana. In case those spells are not enough, of course you have cooldowns, but we're gonna cover that later in a different section. Now, let's talk about Farseer. The main game changer for Farseer is called Co of the Ancestors, which allows you to get those helpers which are gonna be duplicating the actions that you're taking. If you do single target damage, they'll cast Lava Burst. If you do AoE damage, they're gonna cast Chain Lightning. If you do single target healing, they're gonna cast Healing Surges. And if you do AoE healing, they're gonna be casting Chain Heals. The main way to summon them is using one of the nodes in your spec tree, which makes you choose between Undulation and Unleash Life. We haven't talked about this yet, but generally you want to use Undulation, which buffs every third cast of Healing Wave and Healing Surge with 50%. At the same time, Unleash Life is something that you use mainly in raids, but the Ancestors that you summon with it actually last longer. That makes it quite viable for Mythic Plus as well, although that does mean extra button and extra keybind. You could play with Undulation, but that gives you less control of when you can summon your Ancestors. While Unleash Life is quite precise in that regard, and when you combine it with the Heed My Call talent, which extends the duration of the Ancestors by 4 seconds, that means that with Unleash Life you can have the Ancestor up almost all the time. Not to mention that Unleash Life is going to buff your next healing spell, which could be Healing Rain for the damage component as well, or one of your healing spells to get more HPS out. When you add on top your capstone talent called Ancestral Swiftness, which replaces Nature Swiftness, reduces the cooldown down to 30 seconds and summons another Ancestor once you use it, which opens a short window where you're gonna have two Ancestors up at the same time, making you quite powerful every 30 seconds. Now, if that sounds pretty damn nice to you, you're not wrong. In fact, it is, but there are downsides. Playing Farseer Shaman means that now you actually have to hard cast your Healing Rain and now you have to hard cast your Chain Heals, they're not automatic anymore. On top of that you have a new button that you have to press on cooldown, meaning Unleash Life, and you also have to add Nature Swiftness now in the mix which also has to be maintained on cooldown pretty much all the time. 
So compared to Totemic, this is a lot more complicated. However, if you play it correctly, you can get even better results. But of course, you also have to do a lot more work to get there. If we are to look at the rest of the Farseer spec tree, you're gonna find a lot of nodes that increase the healing of your other spells, improve your defensives and cooldowns, and even give you shields every time Ancestor expires. Overall, they're pretty good, but they're also pretty boring. You can check them out on your own. The one that I'm going to note though is called Primordial Capacity. This gives you more mana, which is great for the Resurgence talent, but it also allows Tide the Waves to stack up to four times. If you remember the tier set that we looked at in a previous section, which entirely revolves around playing with Tidal Waves. Well, this makes it a little bit easier to play with with 4 stacks now, although it's not a significant difference. Here's the recommended build for Farseer. It's not much different apart from taking Unleashed Life instead of Undulation. And you could run to Temicroco for this build as well, but I decided to exclude it. You can grab the import string from the description of this video and also make sure to check the following chapters where I talk about the different talent choices and changes that you can make. Now let's summarize everything with the Fire Seer rotation. You would be casting Unleash Life every time it's on cooldown in order to summon your ancestor and have it up all the time. And basically the same stands true for the ancestral swiftness which is going to summon an additional helper. Next up, you want to maintain your healing and acid rain up all the time, and it's totally fine to combine its cast with both Unleashed Life and Ancestral Swiftness, especially at the start of a pool. After you have this rolling, you start spreading Riptides, and you can use your main skills with the minor combos and CDs that we mentioned in the earlier section. In here, you can also add the Healing Stream Totem if you're using that, as it's not going to be casting automatic chain heals anymore. Although you could totally run Cloud Burst Totem as well, especially if you're running this into higher keys. In Heavy AoE Damage, you'll be casting the good old chain heal, this time hard casting it, not automatic anymore. And your single target is still going to be a mix between healing surges and healing waves. If all of that is not enough, you have to pop some cooldowns, and we're going to be talking about that next. When your regular abilities are not enough, you can press a big cooldown button in order to deal with a lot of damage and big boss mechanics. One of your best buttons is called Ascendance. For 15 seconds, you start doing 70% more healing, as well as more than decent initial burst. There's two very important things to say about this button. First, obviously, you need to be doing something and casting healing spells after you press Ascendance in order to get that extra healing. And the second important thing is that the extra healing comes out of you, so your positioning is very important. It gets even better with one of the newest shaman talents called First Ascendant, which reduces the cooldown of that spell down to 2 minutes. Now, this is a choice note with an Ori talent that gives you 25% more haste during Ascendance and 3 seconds longer duration, which is not bad in general, but I think you're going to get much more value being able to press this button every 2 minutes as it's powerful enough already as it is. And the 3 minutes more powerful variant is only going to be useful in some very specific situations where you know, for example, that you're going to be having those enormously big pools and they're exactly 3 minutes apart, which can only be the case in very well organized groups and definitely not bugs. Your next big button is called Healing Tide Totem, which basically puts a huge hot on everybody in your party for 10 seconds. The good part here, once you drop it, it starts healing and you don't have to do anything to get the value out of it, which is not the case with Ascendance. Next up, we have Spirit Link Totem Big Circle that you drop, everybody inside takes 10% less damage and their health pools are shared, which basically makes them immortal. For as long as they're inside, which is not the case for that mage at the back of the room, but that's a different topic. The good news is that now it comes with an extra talent that further reduces the damage reduction and it also heals everyone after you drop it, which is great addition to the spell as usually just dropping the totem is not enough, you have to maintain and heal up the pools for the people that are inside. Let's also mention Ancestral Guidance, you can think of that as a very small version of Ascendance 
which increases your healing by 10% every 2 minutes for 10 seconds, and it has the added benefit of converting some of your damage to healing as well. But unfortunately it got nerfed significantly so it's not that big anymore. And you can rather think of it as a small cooldown instead of a big button, with many people opting to combine it with Ascendance to make that spell more powerful. Before we get to some of the more complicated and advanced topics, let's talk about stats. Not much has changed here, your main priority remains intellect, primary stat, item level, call it whatever you want. And after everything we've mentioned for the critical strike with the synergies and the benefits that it has towards the class, not surprisingly that's your best stat. Next on the list is versatility as the spec scales pretty nicely with it, providing additional damage and healing, not to mention the damage mitigation. Next up we have haste, that's not your best stat, and I usually recommend people to get some so the game does not feel that slow. It could help to speed up things, it could definitely help you do more damage, but it can also help you run out of mana quicker, so I would say this one is more of a personal preference. At the end we have mastery, generally you wanna avoid this as it makes you heal your targets for more based on the amount of missing health that they have. And yes, people will drop low in Mythic Plus, but if you're constantly healing people at 10% health to get the most benefit out of the mastery, uh, somebody's doing something wrong that should not be the case, and if it's not, you're not getting much benefit out of the mastery, so again, probably good idea to avoid it. Alright, let's talk about which totem you should be using, Cloud Burst or Healing Stream. This is always the question with shamans, and as I said previously, right now healing stream totem is broken and it does more healing if you're running the totemic build. On the other hand, if you're playing farce here, the ancestor's healing does not go into the cloud burst, so it seems like this is an easy answer, use healing stream totem. And you would be right and you would be fine doing that in your weekly keys, for sure, especially if you're playing totemic as that turns your healing stream totem into a very good small reactive cooldown. However, if you tune into some of the rest of shamans pushing very high keys, you're gonna notice that they're always playing the Cloudburst totem. They would be right in doing so as well as the Cloudburst totem value rises with the key level. The first reason for that is that the more healing you do, the more it is stored into the Cloudburst and the more it heals for. And yes, the overhealing does count for the Cloudburst, but there is a lot more damage happening in higher keys, so the value of Cloudburst naturally is going to raise in those situations. The second main reason is that in those high keys you often need burst healing to mitigate some huge damage happening very quickly, and if you play it correctly, Cloudburst provides exactly that. And it's not like you cannot and you don't need to play with Cloudburst in lower keys. You can definitely do that, but you can also get away with playing Healing Stream Totem in those situations. So in a nutshell, Cloud Burst is another type of a high skill, high reward type of deal, and if you decide to play with it, feel free to check my video talking about the best Restoration Shaman Week course, including one which is going to tell you exactly when to drop the Cloud Burst before important boss mechanics, so it bursts exactly when you need the healing, but for your regular weekly keys up to like plus 14, plus 15, so you can definitely get away with healing stream totem without any problems. Now let me talk about a few talents that avoided in the builds that I showed you earlier and explain why I did that, starting with Downpour. The new design allows you to press your Healing Rain button for a second time after you cast it to heal everyone in 12 yards for a certain amount and increase their health by 10% for 6 seconds. Now if you tune into some of the big shamans that are pushing high keys, they're gonna swear that this is one of the most useful buttons they have, and they would be right, but I would totally recommend you not to run this in Mythic Plus. The reasons? First, 12 yards is not a lot, so you will not be hitting everyone in your party unless you are in a coordinated group. Second, oftentimes you're casting your healing rain to do damage and there is nothing to heal at that point, so you will be wasting your downpour. And last but not least, the 10% increase health is not going to help you in your weekly keys, where Jaw is eating every single possible mechanic in the face. Having 10% more health is not going to help him survive. 
This becomes extremely useful in very high keys where potentially you would not survive a mechanic and if you have those 10% that will help you actually live. But until you get there, I would recommend to avoid this talent unless you are 100% certain that you can make it work for you in Mythic Plus. The same stands true for another talent called Ancestral Vigor, which gives 10% more health and that stacks with downpour to the main targets of your main healing abilities. And yes, you can run those talents to practice, whatever that means, as I don't think you would be paying attention and making sure that everyone has those buffs on top of them before a boss mechanic hits, as you know that it's not going to one-shot anyone. Instead, you can invest those talents into places where you're gonna get more value, and I'm gonna mention some options in just a little bit. But first, let me talk a little bit about Deeply Rooted Elements, which is another talent that you can pick, and I know some people are big fans of it. It gives you a chance to proc Ascendance every time you're casting Riptide, and you're gonna get the procs because you're casting Riptides all the time. I'm just not a fan of the randomness that's included, so I prefer different options, but if you can make it work and you like it, by all means feel free to take it. There's two more talents that I do not recommend for Mythic Plus, Reactive Forwarding is just weak overall and Earthen Wall Totem shines in Raid, but you don't get that much value out of it in Mythic Plus. And what to do if you have extra talent points because you didn't take Ancestral Vigor or Downpour? As I already mentioned, Torrent is a pretty good choice because it makes your Riptides a bit beefier and I'm a huge fan of this talent. You can also consider Current Control, which reduces the cooldown of healing Tide Totem, allowing you to use this cooldown much more often. And if you're struggling for mana, you can consider picking up Mana Tide Totem, which has an extra talent below it, giving you buffed up healing surges, which are insta-cast, so you can not only get mana back, but also create a small healing cooldown using this. When it comes to defensives, things are looking much better nowadays with your main skill Astro Shift, which is a big damage reduction for 12 seconds and you can reduce the cooldown down to a minute and a half using the talent below it. You now have a second defensive cooldown, the Stone Buark Totem, which gives you an Absorb Shield. It's a 3 minute cooldown, so still unfair compared to some of the other classes, but we'll take it. And then we have the Earth Elemental, which is even longer cooldown, but it gives you 15% increased health for a whole minute, and you can pick additional talent to get some damage reduction as well. You're also going to get some free healing on yourself due to the nature's guardian talent every 45 seconds. If it's free, we'll take it. And then you have two more defensive talents, which are very situational and not always usable. Seasoned Winds gives you damage reduction for a certain spell school, but only after you interrupt a spell from that school. And Spirit Wolf gives you pretty nice damage reduction, but only once you go into a Ghost Wolf and you spend some seconds standing in that form for the buff to stack up, so you might not even pick those talents up in many of the dungeons. I know it's a long guide, but let's also mention the utility you bring to the table. Obviously, Bloodlust is a pretty big one, but you also have a lot of CC in the form of Cap Totem, which stuns your enemies, or Thundershock, which knocks them up. In the Dispel department, you can pick up Poison Cleansing Totem, which is pretty good this season, and you also have the ability to remove curses, which is also useful in some of the dungeons. There's always something to purge, it's another question if it's useful or not, and you can even pick up Tremor Totem for the first boss in Mists of Tyrna's Sight to remove the fears from your teammates. Windrush Totem gives you a speed boost and you can also pick up a talent called Jetstream which now makes it also remove snares. And if needed B you can pick up Hex to help with the CC of mobs. Alright, that was quite the video, let's end it here. First, I'm gonna ask you to support the channel if you can, and if you cannot, that's okay, but make sure to subscribe because I have a lot more content coming for Shaman and other healers as well, and you definitely don't want to miss that. Thank you very much for watching, good luck in your M-plus runs, I'll see you there, now get out of here.